Hi, I'm Chung Nguyen, and today we're going to take a look at the Verizon Wireless Motorola Droid, which will retail for $200 on November 6th. The Droid, which actually comes in a very consumer packaging, is different from the typical traditional Verizon Wireless packaging where it flips up and you have the box and the content inside. The Droid packaging, which we will unbox and do a hardware tour in this first video and cover the software tour of Android 2.0 in a second video, actually opens up to reveal the device as such. So let's go ahead and take a look at the unboxing and the hardware tour. So let's go ahead and remove the device from its packaging by sliding off the cover. Go ahead and put that to the side. And then at the top, you have the Motorola Droid. On the front, you have what looks to be uh, little markings, which shows you what the buttons are and what they do. So Motorola really considered the consumer for this device. We're gonna go ahead and set aside the Droid and see what else is in the box. You have a micro USB to USB cable, which can plug to your computer or the power adapter here to charge the device. A getting started guide which is in color and expands outward. Uh, driving precautions presumably for use with Google Maps for navigation which now includes uh, spoken voice by uh, turn by turn guidance. You have the FCC radio frequency and product safety and warranty information. So we're going to go ahead and set aside all the accessories and take a look at the device. The front of the device, you have a massive 3.7 inch, 854 by 480 screen resolution, which actually can slide up to reveal a contiguous keyboard. For Windows Mobile followers who have been following the HTC devices, the keyboard is reminiscent of the Titan or Titan 2 keyboard. For US users, that would be the Tilt or the Fuse on AT&T. At the top, you have a 3.5mm headphone jack, and it looks like a dual-purpose power and lock button. On the right side of the device, you have the volume up and down switch at the top, and on the bottom here, you have a camera button, which you can press once to focus, and then press again to capture the uh, image. Speaking of the camera, the camera is actually located on the back, and it is a 5 megapixel camera with LED flash and autofocus. Um, the camera can also serve as a camcorder and uh, record 25 frame per second, 720 by 480 um, resolution videos. Um, you also have a speaker, which is on the bottom of the device if you're looking at it in portrait mode. And if you slide off the cover, which has a sticker on it right now, you have a battery and also it comes with a 16 gigabyte micro SD memory card. So let's go ahead and put the back cover back on. Um, there's nothing on the left hand side of the device except for the micro USB charging port. And on the bottom here, the buttons actually are integrated into the capacitive touch screen like on the Storm 2, which you can also see on our video channel. You have the back button, the menu button, the home button, the search button, and also, um, you have some shortcut buttons as well on the keyboard right here, which is a shortcut for the menu button. And you have a directional um, pad right here. It is not an optical pad like on the Samsung Moment, but it is um, actually one that you would actually have to manually click through. On the front at the top here, you have the speaker grill for um, earpiece volume and the volume actually sounds very loud. In the next video segment, we're going to actually cover the um, some of the software that Android 2.0 has and some of the Verizon customization. Um, it looks like Verizon didn't customize this device too much except for including Verizon Wireless Visual Voicemail, which is a subscription service. And also, we're going to take a look at Google Maps Navigation, which will give you turn-by-turn -turn direction. So this is a quick look um, at the Verizon Wireless uh, Motorola Droid. I'm going to go ahead and set the device down and actually power it on. So we're going to go ahead and see what it looks like when it turns on. So here when it turns on you have the Motorola logo.
and then you see the red eye that's infamous in Verizon Wireless's marketing campaign for the droid. And it actually says droid when you turn it on and that same chime actually comes on when you have e uh, email coming in as we are getting right now. Compared to other devices like the HTC Hero on CDMA Carrier Sprint on the Sprint Now network, the Droid is actually um, not that much thicker. It's actually almost about the same thickness. It's a little bit longer and um, in width it's a little bit wider, but the device actually feels solid. It has a glass screen and a metal construction um, for the body, so it actually feels good. It's actually a heavier device. And as you can see right here, you can actually rotate um, this rotary dial here to actually unlock the screen or turn on and off the volume. Compared to the 800 by 480 wide VGA screen of the HTC Amagio, which runs on Windows Mobile 6.5, it uh, looks like the Droid is a little bit thinner um, and a little bit shorter and it looks like the Droid may be a little bit thicker, but the devices are very comparable. The Droid actually doesn't feel um, too wide in the hands. The keyboard actually does give um, a nice click response to it, and the screen is relatively bright. So stay tuned, and we're gonna cover some of the software in our next video.